All right, guys. Well, um, we are live with our first um, uh, Gilbert Public Schools Professional Growth and Development live stream on YouTube. I cannot believe it. I don't even know what is going on. This is so new um, for all of us. Um, and we are trying this out during this remote learning time. Um, so that's really exciting. And um, hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more of these um, for you guys um, as we go through um, quarantine 2020, but also into um, next school year, um, just to get some feedback and hear from our teachers, our administrators. Um, and our hope is that eventually this will become something um, that is rooted in our community um, of Gilbert Public Schools and our professional growth and development team. So I am your host today. I um, am Britt Bingold. I am an instructional specialist in professional growth and development. Welcome to my bedroom because this is the furthest place away from the child that is napping. Um, my other child is basically looking at me through my window um, in the backyard trying to figure out if she if I've, I've started filming <laughs> and she's um, basically in riding her scooter right now. So this is real life. We are quarantined in, um, but I'm super glad that you are able to join me today. Um, we're going to start with just some basic announcements um, and then we'll go through um, kind of what the topics are for today. Um, you'll see scrolling at the bottom of the screen our remote learning tips and trips, tips and tricks page of our employee hub. So if you are an employee of Gilbert Public Schools, you should be able to go to the employee hub, click on um, professional growth and development and then be able to look at that URL down there and um, get to some mini PDs. Um, we're trying to keep them 20 minutes or under. I think mine's the longest so far at 20 minutes, but they're around 10. So some mini professional developments just to help you through this time. Some of them are um, just how to do things with kids at home, so away from the screen. And some of them are for digital tools and how to use them um, in the classroom. So make sure you check that out. It also went out in the no reply email, to, uh, I think yesterday, um, in this morning newsletter. So look for out for those things. Another announcement that I have is that if you are not involved in our social media, um, we would love for you to join us. Um, everything is at GPS, P-R-O-F, so prof, growth. And you'll see that at the bottom of the screen, scrolling. Um, and if Twitter and Instagram, anybody can join, but um, the Facebook group, we need to be um, invited in. But of course, we want to invite you in. Um, there is a community of educators in Gilbert right now that are posting so many things and so many great ideas on our Facebook group um, that if you're feeling isolated and alone, um, and just kind of struggling with this transition, um, please feel free to uh, reach out through our social media. Um, we would love to hear from you. Um, so I think today our um, topic is ditch it or stick with it. And so we're looking at what tools or strategies are we loving right now in the last two weeks of remote learning? And what strategies are we like, we got to kick those to the curb. Those are not working. Um, and I am coming to you from both a teacher, a former teacher, an instructional specialist, and a parent. Um, and I can kind of tell you those um, things that I wish were being ditched and I wish that people were sticking with. Um, and I would love for you guys to use the comments, um, the comment feature, and just um, kind of just type in and see what you are sticking with and ditching. Um, I would love to hear from you guys as we go through our live stream today. Um, but first, I just wanted to do uh, some thoughts from our department. Um, we hope you guys are all well, um, and we hope that your loved ones and your friends and family that are closest to you are also well. Um, this is a crazy time. We are in crisis mode. Um, and we just want you guys to know that we are here for you. Um, I know a lot of us are feeling isolated. I mean, I'm I'm feeling isolated and I'm with my family at home. So can, I can only imagine 
um, really be just being uh, kind of on your own by yourself. That's just hard. And it's been a while and it could be even longer. And so if you feel like you're isolated and you've been social distancing and you're doing all those things, um, we just wanted to reach out to you guys and say, join our social media. Um, join us, um, talk to us, reach out to us. We want to be here to support you professionally, but also if you just need someone to chat with, like we're definitely wanting to support you um, emotionally as well through this time. Um, I miss teaching you all in person and I miss um, dropping my kids off at school. <laughs> And I miss um, just like the normal day life. And I just don't know when we're going to get back to that normal. But we just want, as a department, you guys to feel supportive. And if um, that means that, hey, I've got this distance learning thing down, I'm using playlists and my students are um, doing the WebEx meetings with me and everything's fine. But honestly, I just need someone to tell me what to watch on Netflix next. Um, we are here for you. Okay, so that's just some thoughts from our department. Please feel free to reach out through those social media platforms. Okay. So today's topics, um, and I would love for you guys to come in and post. Um, there should be, oh, there should be a chat box somewhere for you guys to come in and post um, your ideas. Um, but we did have ditch it or stick it as to uh, stick with it as today's topics. Um, if you're not able to post on the chat, it looks like an error has occurred. Well, it is the first time we're doing this. So we'll see what's going on. Wait a moment and try again. So we'll try that again. So that's okay. Our topic is stitch it or stick with it. And so what I wanted to talk about today were some things that I have thought about with the ditching it. Um, I think from a parent's perspective, it's been very difficult to wade through a series of PDF documents. Um, even if my daughter is getting PDF documents that have boxes for her to fill in, it's just super overwhelming. Um, and so maybe ditch that worksheet-based PDF documents and switch it and stick with choice boards, okay? Um, choice boards, if you don't know a lot about them, um, I would be happy to post some to um, our website and to our Facebook group later that some options, but just Google um, some learning menus or choice boards. You could take all of those worksheet topics and turn them into choice boards. I've actually seen several great choice boards um, out and about with our district um, and they make me so happy and that way each student can cover all of those worksheet type content um, but they're more activities based and they don't feel as overwhelming for the parent or the student because they're able to like really see you know okay just do five of these you know and make a bingo or hey have a sampling of this appetizer and do this activity and then here's your main course and then do this activity so i would really ditch if i could from a parent's perspective the packets um and really switch it up and try to turn the packets into choice boards i think that would be a great um, switch that I, I think a lot of people would appreciate. Um, and so those learning menus, especially students who are struggling at home right now, um, they're isolated from their friends. They're stuck with their family. We keep saying we're safe together, but you know, my daughter and my son are about ready to lose it with each other. Um, it gives them a little bit more freedom and especially just feeling like, oh, I could do this activity and I can do that. Um, I think giving them some choice right now would really help their stress levels. Um, I know it would help my stress level as a parent if she had a little bit more choice um, in, in what she could do. And so I've been creating a lot for her. Um, and I think it's just because she has a teacher mom. But we know most of our students, they don't have teacher moms or dads. And so they need um, some help in that way. Another tool that I would like to talk about is just the difference between screencastifying or, or looming 
and um, doing a lecture type situation. If you, I would ditch that. I would ditch the um, screencastifying if you're just having a screencastify of you going through your PowerPoint. Um, that is so not what Screencastify is for. Um, Screencastify is really for um, tutorials. So it's really something you need to tell your students or really demo for them what to do, where to click, um, where to go, how to enter something into somewhere. Um, and so it should be a tutorial tool, not a lecture tool. If there is a lecture, that you need to give your students that they need to listen to. I would recommend just recording yourself using voice memo on your phone or some type of audio recording device, um, posting it, and that way they can listen to it on a walk outside or in their room or on the couch. Um, and they can maybe take notes using um, some type of, you know, thinking map that you've provided for them. That way you know they listen to it, um, but to watch you um, going through slides, that's not really what Screencastify is meant for. So ditch the lecture PowerPoint Screencastify and stick with Screencastify tutorials and doing audio, um, almost like podcasting, of your lectures um, for students to listen to. Um, and then the last thing is just remember that a lot of parents are not teachers. So really try to ditch um, um, giving parents like a whole lesson and really flip it and have um, just kind of some prompts for the students to do. Um, so I think that would really help. Um, that would really help everybody, I think, to feel like they are um, kind of having a balance between um, this just new world we're living in, especially for the kids that don't have digital um, help at home, like digital tools. Um, maybe some of our students aren't able to do the digital platforms and they are just doing the packets. Those choice menus um, and those guided prompts would be so helpful for, I think, families right now, um, especially families that are in, you know, we're all in a global crisis, but so many families are in their own crisis of losing jobs and um working from home and having mom and dad and sister and brother and all everybody's in different rooms trying to figure out how to do this together um so that's kind of the topic today was ditch it or stick it stick with it um and then i keep trying to figure out how to get the comment bar to work um and it's not so i'm not quite sure and i feel i feel bad if i can't see your chat because that's part of uh the live stream so we definitely got to figure that that piece of it out. Um, but for now, and I'm, I'm going to try to figure that out towards the end, um, I want to go over Flipgrid because that is my number one tool right now is um, if you're going to stick with anything, it should be Flipgrid. Um, and our ties under the quick links have tutorials and they have open forums that you can pop into to learn more about Flipgrid. Um, but I just wanted to go over some ways that I think Flipgrid could be used. Um, I think it's underused. Just recently um, for our quarantine 2020, Flipgrid has now made videos from five minute limit to 10. Let's just take a moment and just be so excited that they're 10 minutes. Um, I am so excited about that. Um, I think it is going to be powerful right now for us um, as a remote learning community to be able to have students post longer videos. So some of the ways that you could use Flipgrid, you could ask students to share their favorite book or story um, and post that to the Flipgrid wall, and then students can comment on that. Um, I think that's a great way, especially if they're reading something right now um, that you've assigned to them, have them post their favorite line or excerpt from it to Flipgrid and explain why. I think that's so much better. Um, and then you, they've had to do some thinking and critical um, re like reflection and metacognition there, which I think is very helpful for students. Um, another thing is, and this would help me a lot as a parent, in Flipgrid, if they all could write out a problem on a sheet of paper, 
and they could hold it up. Maybe you've assigned each kid a problem or um, maybe there was a set of problems that you assigned and they could hold up that problem and they could describe and narrate how they solved it. Um, that would be awesome. First of all, it's metacognition. Second of all, it's reciprocal teaching. And third, it actually is having them explain and narrate using audio how they got to that answer. Because right now, my first grader is not doing, she is doing her math and I am like, okay, well, how did you get to that answer? And she's like, well, I used my brain. And I'm like, mm, okay, that's true. But um, also, but how did you actually get to that answer? Especially because sometimes um, with math, you know, since it's um, the, the new math that parents are all scared of, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the memes on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram that say, you know, this kid's about to learn how to carry the one, you know, I think a lot of parents are feeling that way. Um, and so if a parent could just go on a flip grid and watch like, 30 kids explain how they solve that problem or those different types of problems, it would help the parents as well. So that would be just kind of an idea of how to use Flipgrid in that way. Um, also, they could do some connections to past and present events. So there is a really cool um, podcast. It is through NPR. It is basically called Through Line. And so I'm having it scroll at the bottom of the um, page right now, but it takes a past event and, or sorry, yeah, I think it takes a past event and connects it to a current event. So it would be great for students to do compare and contrast thinking maps of a past event and a current event and kind of their thoughts on that and then um, narrate what they've learned about that um, on a Flipgrid wall because now they've got 10 minutes to talk. It doesn't have to be this really short five minute um, video link. So I think that would be a really cool um, way to use Flipgrid as well. Um, and they would be able to uh, teach each other what they've learned. Um, I also think it would be really great to have students or challenge students using Flipgrid to um, include as many types of media as they can into their Flipgrid. So ask them, be like, I wanna see, I wanna hear music, I wanna see some art, I wanna hear some dialogue and narration, um, I wanna see, you know, I don't know if we want interpretive dancing, but I, you know, as many different types of media um, and visuals that they could provide into their 10 minute Flipgrid to teach a topic about something that maybe you've assigned or maybe it's just something that they're really good at. Um, because I think this is a time where, you know, developing those relationships is key. Um, we have to maintain that in this isolated environment. And, um, you know, during your WebEx, if you pull up a Flipgrid screen and um, you share that screen with your students and you start playing those videos, uh, those kids are going to be like, hey, that's mine, and I did this, and this was my project, um, and I used this song, and here's why I used the song, and um, and students can comment on each other's Flipgrid posts, um, and I, I, that's why that's my number one tool for sure, um, but I think that would be a great challenge for students to do um, something where they have to blend all these different types of media into one Flipgrid post about a topic. Um, you know, I think right now a lot of kids are stuck inside. So a good Flipgrid challenge would be for them to have a personal health goal, maybe. So the first Flipgrid, it would be, hey, what's something that you personally want to work on during um, this quarantine time that we're in? And they could post it and, you know, kind of talk about it. And then they could maybe then for the next time later post some of the like post them doing some activities or exercises or um, showing how they're doing it so other students can see it um, so that they can see like, oh, right now I'm trying to do this or I'm cooking my um, breakfast. It's healthier. I used to eat Pop-Tarts and now I'm learning how to scramble some eggs um, and add some meat, you know, something that will get them just kind of thinking outside the box. Um, and that still kind of will cover what they're missing in specials like PE and sports and all of those things that I, all of our students just, everything just stopped. 
I know they love, you know, playing their games and, and, and watching Netflix and watching Hulu. Um, but I think if you can give them some of those challenges, I think they would appreciate it. I think as a student, they would, I mean, I know my daughter would love it. She would probably be like, let's go learn yoga or something, um, or, or probably make me learn another go noodle dance was probably happen. Um, she has made me learn several of those. Um, so I think that would be maybe a good idea. Um, another thing you could do is for like world language, I know maybe you might be struggling some world languages is have your students come up with some type of puppet show um, on a Flipgrid using their world, the, the language that they're studying. They could just make puppets with sticks like popsicle sticks and paper, um, and they could just have them on the screen and um, they could share them all on the Flipgrid board and then each um, they can then watch each other's puppet shows. I'm sure that would be one hilarious. Um, but then two, you as the teacher could really go through and provide feedback on um, that's where they did a great job using the language and then where they need to improve on that use of the language. Um, so I think that might be a great way for them to have some fun, but then also be able to um, incorporate their language and what they're doing in that subject area. Um, and that's all just posting to that Flipgrid wall. Um, and you can just take it off from there. Um, and, um, having them practice using that um, would be a good, a good use of Flipgrid. And then um, having students just look at a piece of work from this past year. Um, have them go through their binders and see if they are, um, you know, like find some type of piece of work, uh, maybe a test, something that they maybe did well on or maybe they didn't and have them on Flipgrid, <clears throat> excuse me, do some metacognition, um, reflect on what they learned, um, what they remember from it, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, maybe something like that um, on a, a piece of past work that they can find if they dig in their, in their backpacks. Um, I know my daughter just got her materials back today. It was very um, surreal to see just bags of student work um, lining the um, street uh, the street in front of her school um, with all of the teachers and masks and gloves handing out just plastic garbage bags full of my daughter's desk materials. It was probably the most bizarre thing that happened to me this morning. Um, but now she's got all of her work and she's got her workbooks, um, which have helpful parenting <laughs> lessons in them. So that's going to be hopefully good. But she could look through all those art pieces and those work and she could post a Flipgrid um, saying, oh, my gosh, I remember when we did this project and here's what I loved about it. And she's in first grade and that's something she could do. But high school students, you know, AP students could do that with a piece of writing um, or a project that they did in second quarter. Um, oh, my dog just moved behind me. I don't know if you can see him, but he's lying right there. So <laughs> he's sleeping, um, which, you know, a lot of us are doing that during the quarantine. But yeah, I think just having them do some metacognition is an easy way to do a flip grid. Um, and then, you know, the, the thing that I think a lot of teachers don't know about flip grid is that you can actually embed a live YouTube stream. So actually what I'm doing right now streaming live on YouTube. Um, you could take this link, embed it into a Flipgrid, and students could comment their own posts from Flipgrid on the live stream. NASA does a ton of live streams. So for science, that might be something cool to have like a an actual live stream, something that's going on right now. Like, hey, every kid, let's jump on at 10 because there's a NASA live stream that I want you guys to engage in um, and have some discussion with and listen. Um, and so Flipgrid does allow for that as well. Um, and they can allow, and they can post videos um, of what they've learned from those live streams. Um, but you don't even have to have it at a live stream. You can post any video of you doing a tutorial or maybe a, a quick discussion and having them respond to you on Flipgrid. Um, and I think that's why Flipgrid is my, my number one. It's a way for 
people to our students and teachers to post um, and uh, and use it as a, a discussion tool, um, a sharing tool, uh, reciprocal teaching, metacognition. Um, and I think the last thing that I think would be great to use it for, especially if you've never used Flipgrid before, um, is to use it for some good news. I think our students could really use right now some good news. Um, they are being inundated with a lot of negativity in their lives. I think they are um, scared. I know my daughter is super scared. She realizes a little bit more than my three-year-old what's going on. Um, you know, we just keep telling my three-year-old, the park is sick, the park is sick. Um, but he doesn't quite get it where my daughter is like, like she knows that people are losing their lives right now and that we have to stay home to stay safe. And that is something as a parent, I just never thought I would have to deal with. Um, and I think, I think your students and I know my daughter really could use some good news. So if you don't know John Krasinski, um, then I, I don't know what rock you lived under, but it's fine. Um, but he was on The Office. He was Jim from The Office. And he started a YouTube channel like two weeks ago, and it's called Some Good News. And if you haven't watched it, I highly encourage you to watch it because it's adorable. And um, it's basically him just trying to put out good news into the world right now um, and sharing what he has seen on social media all the good things that are happening during this crisis um, that, you know, there's a lot of horrible, scary, isolating things happening, but he could, he, he's trying to share some good news. So if you had your students um, find something great that they wanted to just share on Flipgrid and talk about. Um, I know a lot of teachers are doing show and tell, but for the older students, um, you know, my show and tell would be something like, this is my coffee mug. I love Ray Dunn. Like that might not work as much, but um, I think some of the high school students really have probably seen some really great things on social media that are school appropriate that they would want to share with each other and say, I just saw the coolest thing that's happening. And these people are making masks out of this for this hospital. Um, and what a great way to use Flipgrid, um, just this digital tool. Uh, to share some good news. So if you haven't used that yet, um, that would be, I think, a cool first way to use Flipgrid and get and let your students get used to it. So if you're going to stick with anything or add anything new to your classes over the next four weeks until we get out of here um, into summer, which who knows what that's going to look like. Um, Flipgrid is my number one, you guys. It is, um, there's so many uses and I hope I tried to cover um, a variety of content areas for you guys today with Flipgrid um, because I think it is a powerful tool and it is um, it's very user friendly um, for the teacher and the student on both ends it's super user friendly much more user friendly than my chat is right now so um, that is my number one tool is Flipgrid and that's the one I would um, love for you guys to um, uh, be able to see and, and use and try. Um, so let me see if I could figure out um, how to get the chat up. If I can't, unfortunately, I guess I'll have to end it a half an hour early. I was hoping the last half hour to just build off of your, your chats. Um, but um, if not, then we'll, we can end it early. Um, uh, Let's see if I hit this. No, that's not it. Sorry, bear with me. This is my first one. Hopefully you've gotten enough out of this to feel like you're you're in it. Um, let's see, settings, comment, chat. Mm. And I know things are delayed on on our YouTube channel, so. We'll see if I can fix that for next time because I really, really do want to hear from you guys what you're sticking with for this next couple weeks and what you are ditching. 
Um, so unfortunately, I knew, you know, there was going to be some type of quirk. Um, and it looks like it's the chat bar. So I'll have to figure that out and troubleshoot that with um, StreamYard, which is what I'm using to get through uh, the, the, um, the, oh, the chat, the chat is working for StreamYard, but not my actual chat. Um, so sorry about that. Sorry about the dingy noises. Okay. Well, I guess that'll be it for today then. Um, I do want to just quickly remind you guys, um, if you're feeling alone, if you are having a hard time with teaching online or just in, and missing your students and missing your daily routine, um, that we would love for you to reach out to us. Um, we are here for you. Um, I know um, Wendy, Julia, Vicki, and I are doing our best to provide you with, um, you know, strategies for home learning. Um, but we also want to provide you with support um, in any other way that we can. Um, I also would encourage you to check out the TIES Quick Links. Their open forums are running all day. They've got classes going on all day um, to try to help you guys manage and get through this. And, and then they're doing such an awesome job. Um, and then I also would like you guys to know that um, at the bottom of the screen is my social media. It's my personal one. It's at thebitsofbrit.com. And um, I would love for you guys to follow me and, and then DM me if you feel like you need just to chat with somebody. Um, I'm here for you. And um, I just want to thank you guys for joining my first live stream. Um, I'm sorry there were some bugs and kinks that we need to work out. Um, but I'm hoping that next Thursday at one o'clock, we can do this again. And um, I appreciate everybody that came in and uh, viewed uh, the live stream with me today. Um, again, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and have a great week next week. Oh, and don't forget to go to the hub and check out our screen side chats and our new mini PD for the week. Bye, guys. Have a great day.